Welcome to Bossier City, Louisiana. It's number 19 LSU meeting Louisiana Tech. These are the starters. LSU at 10 and 0. Their top scorer comes off the bench. Atari Eason for Louisiana Tech. Their star is Kenneth Lofton Jr., a lefty. 19 points per big body, and he'll be jumping against a seven-footer in Efton Reed. John Sadak, and he'll be jumping against a seven-footer in Efton Reed. John Sadak, Tim Doyle, our CBS crew, and Louisiana Pride on the line here. Tigers, one of the best defenses in the country, and Louisiana Tech, one of the better offenses at Conference USA as we are underway. Great defense versus great offense. It's simple. Something's got to give. These teams met a season ago in Baton Rouge. That was a bludgeoning that went LSU's way. And LSU 10 and 0 for the first time since 1999 has won its first 10 games by an average of 26 per only once in double figures and They're just so long and athletic, but if you have not seen Louisiana Tech play number two in white is a special I repeat a special talent Only once not in double figures Archibald touch pass for the shoot Gotta put it up with hesitation and a splash. Amari Archibald had run cold. He had been five for his last 21 from three. Do they have to hit threes to upset LSU? Aggressive take in the bucket. Toby Williams. This is just an ideal start for head coach Eric Conkle and his Bulldogs team. Great crowd down here in Louisiana to watch these two in-state foes. You know the guys from Louisiana Tech, they take this game personal. Double on Darius Days, who travels. The head man for Louisiana Tech, Eric Conkle, once Jim Laranega's offensive coordinator at Miami. He has led the Bulldogs to 20 wins, a program record five times in his first six seasons. At last year, Conference USA Coach of the Year, and I think it's only a matter of time before he gets a Power 5 job. Louisiana Tech this year has played two other Power 5 teams. They're 0-2. Everybody else, undefeated, 8-0. No. A big test here against LSU. They handle the pressure up the floor, but time is ticking. Williams with five to shoot. Lofton. Williams wins it, has it taken away by Reed. Lofton can bring it up the floor. He can pass. He's got a great handle. Poked out of bounds by Pinson. He actually got a handle on that ball there and uh, created that turnover. But I talked to him before the game as we check out Will Wade. His fifth season on the sidelines has won over 70% of his games. Well, I guess that's 70. Six, nine, nine, nine. Can I say 70, John? Sure. Yeah, you can round up. Thank you. Yeah. LSU number three in the net rankings early this year. Only Baylor and Arizona in front of them. Boston sees a double. Dribbles out of it, up the grain of the lane, tipped out of bounds, set of a shoot. I talked to Kenneth Lofton before the game, and I said, do you expect a double? He says, if they don't double me, LSU's in for a long night. Many teams have not doubled him, particularly power teams. Three to shoot. Archibald again, a hoist at the horn, and he drains it! Eight nothing out of the gate. Reed floats it up. Rattles loose. One by Louisiana Tech. Our bucket here. If you will wait, you're probably going to get a timeout. And a foul as Reed hits Lofton. You're down eight nothing if you're LSU, but two end of the shot clock. Buckets here. Great job by Archibald. He made the previous one. He creates a little bit of space, shooting 36% on the year. Second on the team in scoring. He's got this team off to an outstanding start. This is a dream start for Louisiana Tech. Lofton wants it. Beat up by Days. Opposite corner. Quick load three. 
Off target. Easton Willis, who became a starter when Isaiah Crawford got sidelined for the year with a knee injury. If you're LSU, you got to go north and south here. You've gotten some great looks down low, but a ton of empty possessions here as we check out the keys to the game. And hey, when you're playing Louisiana Tech, you got to figure out a way to slow down Kenneth Lofton on the flip side. Yara Conco, let him eat, let the big fella eat. And LSU, they have an Achilles heel. They're not a great outside shooting team. They're going to have to make some threes, I think, to the tune of eight plus or more in this game. Defensive rebounding, another weakness cited by Will Wade as Williams down the lane gets hit and fouled. And it's going to be Brandon Murray with his first. What's your feel on the first three plus minutes? You know, it, it's almost LSU got overwhelmed because you don't want to call them lucky shots, but two shots were made with one second on the shot clock. And if you're Louisiana Tech and Eric Conco, it's like. This is the greatest start to any game that you could have imagined. Teams coming out, they're playing with confidence. Other guys have scored besides Kenneth Lofton. And if you make some outside shots, what's that going to do over the course of 40 minutes? Well, that's going to open up the inside for the guy like Lofton. Kobe Williams, a very good free throw shooter, 76%. And misses off the heel. That's a strength on the year for Louisiana Tech. One of the better free throw shooting teams, not only by percentage, but they get to the line a ton. Lofton gets to the line more than many in America. And coming into this game, averaging over 80 points a game, Louisiana Tech was. Converts on the back end, a nine zip lead for Louisiana Tech on a 10 0 LSU team. Pinson, the transfer from Mizzou. Ball screen from Reed. And help from Lofton knocks it through. Numbers for the Bulldogs. Archibald again! Bit of a heat check moment there, and Reed's got the board. Well, this is where LSU's at its best, when they are in transition. Good job by Louisiana Tech getting back. I think this is where Pinson needs to be aggressive. Brandon Murray lets it fly off, and that's a weakness for the team. Won by Williams. Willis quick load short Lofton's got it underneath up fake go strong Now a dead ball means immediate but Will Wade is asking his bench to be called timeout On high And a switch Pinson the first points for LSU Yeah and Pinson he, he, sometimes you have to be selfish for the good of your team Pinson's a Missouri transfer who last year had a game where he buried eight threes against TCU He needs to be aggressive when the team struggles on offense Williams very aggressive one on four doesn't work Vincent floats it up One and done again almost like a carnival hoop there. We were all waiting in anticipation as if it was gonna drop in I got a chance to shoot with the balls before the game and they're new and I thought, oh, this guy's going to have trouble making shots in this game. Williams wide open up top. Misses. And the rebound to Dames. And whenever a ball is that bright, you can tell it doesn't have much wear and tear on it. Benson stepping back. Short. Yeah, they felt particularly spongy. There was a little bit of extra bounce to it today. Yeah. Was that what allowed you to dunk before the game? Was that just was getting it. that grip? Yeah. I mean, I have the ups. Lofton wants it middle. Christian hangs, feeds Lofton. Muscling in. Through a double, passes out. Eight to shoot, let it fly. Willis! The Bulldogs are burying threes. The lead back to 11. Greens. Wilkinson, the elbow, J. A lot of jumpers from LSU. Days takes a tumble. Numbers for the Bulldogs. Willis, in and out. 
What's LSU's offensive identity right now? Yeah, I mean, Penson has the only field goal. I would look to Reed down low, maybe go inside out. They just seem like they've been getting blitzed in this game. There's Reed on the block. And he gets doubled, passes out of it. Wilkinson coughs it up. Reed puts it home. I, I know it's old school, and that's kind of Reed's type of game. I mean, he's only a freshman at seven foot. He's going to be a good one. Last out, 15 points, 10 rebounds against Northwestern State. But, yeah, not much going on with the ball screen. So get your big a touch. Let's see if he can get any rhythm down low. He's got really soft touch. Lofton wants it, leads to a curling Archibald. Opposite corner, quick low three, Willis off. And Days has it for LSU. Now, this is an important basket for LSU. Just to weather the storm and cut this to seven, maybe even six. Days, who's a deuce short of a thousand points. Aggressive cut, float shot over Lofton, tip for Stewart. One by Archibald. On the sprint alongside Williams, right down the lane! Amari Archibald has been sensational. Pinson, floater off, another one and done. And Christian gets fouled by Days. Louisiana Tech has come out fired up, making shots. Amari Archibald setting the Tech has made three threes, and they have yet to turn it over. Zero turnovers to start this game. You know, I was thinking about Kenneth Lofton because there was eight minutes played without a stoppage. His freshman year, that would have been a game because his coach Eric Conkle said that he had to keep him in like an 18 minute a game type time frame and he's out there running around. He's getting a breather right now because there's going to be an under 12 timeout next to that ball. An aggressive trapping down low. Reverse! Subs on both sides and Kenny Hunter off the bench springs for the bucket. A deal will wait right now. You cannot be happy with that dribble penetration. That's what LSU prides itself on. The best defensive team in college basketball going into coming into this game. Tari Eason, LSU's leading scorer, is in. Pinson, baseline J, off, wins the board. Eason finally gets a touch. And a bad miss. That's hard to do. You know, first touch, you gotta shoot the ball. It's not for everybody. Turnover on the end days. Numbers for the Tigers. Eason slicing down the lane, floats it off, rattles it down. See, he had to touch the ball the first time. <laughs> he was able to make it the second time. Really nice, smooth finish for the leading scorer on LSU. The Tigers' leading scorer comes off the bench, John. Also, the length of Alex Fudge, who can deflect and steal with the best of them. The freshman at 6'8 wears number three on the right hand side of your screen, near side. Eight to shoot, tip ball. And over and back. Uh, Louisiana Tech has come out and brought the energy in this game. Great season so far. I love that about Will Wade, and I think that other Power 5 schools, you know, don't give the quote-unquote smaller schools that opportunity. Look at the fans here. There's an excitement here. There's a buzz that traditionally you don't see in maybe December non-conference games. So hats off to Will Wade, but all of a sudden, this team's got a hold of dig out of it. Eason, three ball. Off, and the board to Louisiana Tech. So Damian Bradford, Texas A&M transfer. Corner look. David Green, the Hofstra transfer off, one weak side by Kenny Hunter. Archibald opposite. Lofton getting a breather, not on the floor here. Turnover again. Eric Gaines down the lane. Some four shots that aren't quite in flow for LSU at times. Yeah, great, great example of that. Just zero rhythm. I think that's the word I was looking for. It was like... They haven't had an offensive set with any fluidity in the first 10 minutes of this game, Ellis, here. Archibald feeds corner. Three ball off for Caleb Stewart. Multiple subs lying away for both teams. Four for the Bulldogs. Pinson. Corner fudge. Days has it weak side, and there's 1,000 points for Darius Days and a flop warning to Archibald.
And watch Archambault there. Yeah, I mean, I've seen that call to push before. Instead, Dave's is able to get position, and then, you know, Archambault gets called for the flop. I've been in Archambault's position where you're like, well, I'm not going to block this shot. Let's see if the ref calls a charge. Obviously, this officiating crew is not fooled. And Doug Sermon's lead official made the call. He's worked seven of the last eight Final Fours. Tic-tac-toe passing. Good closeout defensively for LSU. Opposite corner. Bradford at the top of the backboard. They're shooting, games all over the place. They're shooting a lot of threes, aren't they, Louisiana Tech? Seems like every time now. Here, travel. It does feel like they fell in love with that a little bit. Yeah, they buried three in the early stage of the game. They can hit the three, but they're not a three-point heavy team. No, I, and it's important they make a few, but I think you got to get number two and White a touch right now. You see early on, they've already taken 12 threes, so they're on pace to shoot 48 threes for this game. You like that quick man, John? 70%. <laughs> Bradford, opposite, Christian. Lofton, one of the easier boards that he's had. Willis, three ball. When they go down, they look good. Gaines, nice move. Lost Williams. Just a little strong. Tip sideline. Out of bounds. Yeah, Louisiana Tech is just winning all of the hustle. And then Willis buries the three. He had 16 earlier. You know, Louisiana Tech opened their season against Alabama. That was the game where Willis had 16 against. And I asked Eric Conkle, I go, do you wish that game was maybe in December, a month that you're undefeated? And he goes, no, I love playing a tough game right away. It sets the tone to see where we are as a squad and what we need to work on. I watched that Alabama game. John, it was not competitive. Louisiana Tech got really beaten up in that game. And you had said getting lofted in touches was part of the puzzle, the problem they had. Turn it over. Gaines throws it down. Gaines may have the longest arms I've ever seen. Dude, that is like custom shirts only. Picks the pocket of Kobe Williams, then playgrounds it off his hip out of bounds. Oh, Gaines has brought some energy here, but if he lived in a studio apartment, he could be cooking eggs. Take a mention, maybe Stanley Roberts. But anybody else, I'm all ears because Carl Malone and Paul Millsap have had outstanding NBA careers. The former Chris, Chris Jackson. Offensive foul. Efton Reed comes up with a smirk. He believes there might have been an acting job there from Lofton. Let's check out one more time here. You know, Lofton is starting to get accolades of All-American type status. So, you know, Reed's only a freshman. Lofton's a guy who's had games this year against NC State where he had 36 points and 17 rebounds. Two games after that, he followed it up with 31 points and 14 rebounds and a great win over Santa Clara. It's two fouls on Reed, who has gone to the bench. I think gotta get him a touch here. Lofton wants it. Ben on the bounce, and they read that. Oh, it was so slow developing, wasn't it? It's like they saw the me draw. Lob down low, Eason, right under the cup. And there's such a calmness and a methodical nature to how LSU is getting back in this. Well, now this is their calling card, getting offense from their defense. A guy like Gaines has come in. This is an excellent pass there by Brandon Murray just lobbing over the top and Easton has done that he's given them energy off the bench That's been the story all year. He's led the Tigers in scoring seven out of ten games You see Murray goes to the bench with his second foul probably not gonna see him the rest of the half Williams running point Bulldogs lost Isaiah Crawford for the year with a knee injury Williams 
counted. Alex Fudge. I just once want to be able to jump like this. Is Fudge's head above the rim there? Oh, his arms certainly are. And it's the length of, of the team, but in particular, Fudge and Games alter so many shots. And Will Wade told us it was at VCU that he started charting deflections and the value he sees in that hustle and how it leads to wins. Their goal is to get about 40 deflections a game. They're averaging in the mid-30s right now. Vinson defended by Lofton, nine to shoot. Wilkinson shakes his man. Just about flat-footed, banks it in. You can feel the time of this game, John, is starting to turn a bit here. That's why I would love for Louisiana Tech, though. Some would call that clean, but they call the foul there as games once again with those long arms. But great body control. And then able to use the glass. LSU clawing back into this game down eight. The last time these teams met, December of last year, LSU led by 21 of the half. So Louisiana Tech that's enjoyed a double-digit lead most of the first half so far. And a foul. Lonnie Wilkinson. Fouls piling up on the Tigers. That's 17 fouls. Well, that was a big reaction, John, from the LSU bench. Normally you don't see that. I see Will Wade's not happy, but there's like six LSU staff members, teammates. They all stood up at once questioning that call, but instead of one-on-one -on -one opportunity, got to make your free throws here. If you're going to pull off an upset like that, you got to take advantage of these opportunities. Houston Willis, 80% shooter, misses the front end of a one and one. And some would say there, John, ball, don't lie. Games foul. Be sure to tune in to that other pregame show tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Eastern time. As the crew will get you set for the full day's NFL slate. That's that other pregame show tomorrow at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Mount from LSU, one of the best in the country, turning opponents over. I just think you have to get Loft in a touch, and there he is. Home run pass and an easy rattle down. It's a hard guy to lose. Well, guards getting back has been a concern for LSU, despite its success in turning teams over and the way they thrive in transition. There are flaws in that transition defense. Aggressive take, blocking foul. I mean, I don't know how Lofton basically snuck behind the secondary there, was able to get a layup. Now you heard the crowd reaction before. I just want to tune you in. Team fouls, LSU, you see there, seven. Louisiana Tech with only two. Maybe why the sarcastic clapping there from Tiger Nation. Just gets it into Days. He's been fairly quiet. Days, their second leading scorer, their leading rebounder. Gets fed in the corner. Dangerous contact is lofted, and boxed out. Eason put back is off. Loose ball with bodies flying one by Days. Deep look, Pinson. Rebound, Eason. Foul. That'll be his first. 
I mean, you want to talk about big time college basketball? You got some physical play there. Obviously, that's not loft and straight. He, he was trying to box out on that play. Bodies are flying everywhere. Crowds into this game. Love the energy here between two rivals. And we all know Louisiana Tech, you know, they have to play the second fiddle to LSU, whether it's you know, in the newspaper or getting the recognition on the local news. So this game means so much to them. This is their Super Bowl to go up against the Tigers. Xavier Christian, one of the captains for the Bulldogs, 82% shooter, converts on the first. He was one of Eric Conkle's best players and then had a medical issue that was suffered in practice late November of 2018, cost him the rest of the season. His resolve to come back from those challenges and play came shortly after perhaps his best game as a Bulldog. That's when he had 15 when they played LSU tough earlier that same month and lost by only a couple of possessions. Eason, eager, drops it down from deep. I really like Easton's game. It's inside, it's out, it's in transition, it's super smooth. Williams, a little more helter skelter. Willis, their best shooter. Off, and Easton's got it weak side. I would go back to that Easton matchup, yeah, against Lofton. Three ball again, off. We haven't heard from Amari Archibald in a while. He controlled the game in the first few minutes. Now he made some big shots at the end of the shot clock. And when you get Louisiana Tech in the half court, Miles, they've shot too many threes here. I think you got to get number two a touch. There he is. Swish and Xavier Christian. Back to ten. And a travel. Well, LSU got great energy off the bench. Easton, a couple of hoops. Now and then, obviously, what COVID has done lately, now six pole postponements. And I think it's a, approaching a fluid situation again, John. And we are right there. That includes one of the other nationally undefeated teams colorado state and it's game white there's seven unblemished teams left in division one at the day's start including lsu that's been in peril basically from jump lofton wants it against days it's fed by willis five to shoot double comes falling away airborne Good job. Good job by LSU, John, pushing him out of. You see where he ended up catching the ball? He's like 16 feet away to post up. They're going to get a foul there on Christian down low. But you don't want Kenneth Lofton in his sweet spot, which is like seven feet and in. And look, look, look at that catch. I mean, look how far away. Look at all that distance there. And then you got help defense. I don't think Louisiana Tech's doing a good enough job swinging the ball side to side. They're 5 of 16 from 3, and before that miss, they were actually 6 of 8 from 2. So they got to be shooting more twos, being more aggressive, getting aloft in more touches. Christian to the bench with two fouls. Bradford's in. Eason is wanted one on one against Lofton in the half court. Lies in wait. Screens for games. Days sticks it. Sideline trap show. Archibald. If you're Will Wayne, if you can get this to under six going into the half, you've got to feel pretty good about that. William zigzagging. What I really like about LSU is Eason and Days, 
at 6'7 and 6'8, John, they can create their own shot. And whether it's stepping out for three or putting the ball on the floor, a good job by Louisiana Tech. This is them being aggressive, getting into that two-point range. And this doesn't count as a field goal attempt, but in my eyes, it was an attacking move, and now you get a chance to, you know, shoot a one and one Nine team fouls on LSU. That was Pinson's first. The last of the one and ones for the Bulldogs this half. William Simpson, Louisiana Tech has not beaten a ranked team since 1991. It was when Anthony Dade, who scored nearly 2,000 in his Bulldog career, dropped 20. They hit free throws down the stretch and knocked off of the New Orleans team that was led by a Louisiana Tech alumnus who went on to even bigger heights collegiately and in the NBA. Tim Floyd was the head coach back then. Wilkinson falling away over Archibald. No. Eason wins it. The ball has found him. Fudge sweeping to the hoop. Draws the foul. Well, these are the all-time wins over ranked teams in Louisiana Tech history. Three and 41 all-time. That's how big a win like this could be. Yeah, and then, obviously, beating a team like LSU, who's ranked, you could argue, biggest win ever. Do you know what the number one song was when they knocked off New Orleans in February of 91? It was CC Music Factory. Everybody danced that which is played, I believe, in 94.6% of arenas during games. <laughs> That's when they break out Jock Jams, volume two. Yes, everybody yeah. knows. Yeah, whoop, there it is. A little Gary Glitter action. Now these are big free throws under two minutes. Louisiana Tech has known basically a three-possession lead for most of the half. It was a good job by Fudge. He knew he had Lofton on him. He took advantage of it, being aggressive. Goes to the line and makes him pay. Yeah, like I said, if Will Wade can get this to six or below, he's got to feel pretty good. Williams double, bad diagonal pass. Got a little lucky. Bradford. Lofton leads it up. And a flop. So we've got two flop whistles in this game. I'm going to start calling that on my children. Just flops. It's a flop. <laughs> Go to your room. I'd love to see how mom reacts. Yeah, like uh, the, the neighbor's kids. You're flopping. Go home. You can't be hanging out here. <laughs> that is a point of emphasis, both in the Doyle household and in college basketball. <laughs> Under 90 seconds. Bulldogs by 10. Wilkinson rejected by Archibald. This is just a, an amazing job by Archambault. He's made some big shots early in the game. And coaches don't want to hear this, John. But when you make shots, you play harder on defense. They want you to play hard all the time. You don't normally do that as a player. You just play a little bit harder when the ball's going in. Eason. Archambault lost handle, resettles. Under a minute. And Lofton draws the foul. Yeah, it's not always pretty in Kenneth Lofton, but it's effective. And I talked to him before the game, and I said, who do you like to watch at the pro level? And he gave me two interesting names. The Nikola Jokic, the reigning MVP for the Denver Nuggets, and James Harden. That was kind of a hardness foul, the way he threw his body in there and got himself to the free throw line. And I think his shot, as he goes on and on, because he's honestly listed as a freshman, but it's his second year in college basketball. You watch the rotation on the ball, the form, it's good. It's there. Free throw off. Now, his shot may be improving in his eyes, maybe a little bit better than what his coach believes. 
as far as stepping out and shooting threes, but he's going to get fouled a lot. It's important that he goes to the line and makes teams pay. It's one of two. LSU stout defense has been averaging 24 points allowed at halftime on the year. That's 35 for Louisiana Tech. How are you managing shot to game clock if you're LSU? Here? You know, I'm a big two for one guy. Nobody does it in college basketball, but they, they should get a shot off here right away. It's the, the math of it, but college coaches don't like to relinquish that power of the two for one with their players. Days. The whistles have piled up. Now, if you don't understand what the two for one is, it, it ends up this is what LSU is going to get here. So they potentially get two. Now Louisiana Tech can get two or three, but now you get the ball back again. So you could end up getting five, and the other team can get zero. Versus, you know, if you only have one possession, then you could actually lose a point if you make a two and they make a three. So it's always better to do two for one. But and it only happens once in college basketball. It's only one half versus four quarters. But no one seems to think like that or do that. And I think eventually the analytics will catch up of the two for one. Now, Louisiana Tech, they don't have enough time simply to do it here. It was Lofton out offense, defense, protecting from fouls? Yes, more yeah, offense. You want him in. Yeah, for sure. Days wins the loose ball. Tip by Days again rattles down. Timeout Will Wade. He sprinted to midcourt. We'll step aside. 16 seconds. Bulldog ball. Louisiana Tech made not one but two shots at the end of the shot clock. They fell behind 8 0. You know, since that point, you know, they've played even basketball. But this is a big momentum shot here because Louisiana Tech, they've had all the momentum in the first half. Make a basket here, fans are going to be pretty amped. They've led by as many as 13. Can they make it double digits at the break against the 19th ranked team of the country? Williams, three seconds, three ball. Bad miss. 35-27 at halftime. Bulldogs looking south. Uh, it was all about the defense for Louisiana Tech and Will Wade is going to need to make some adjustments, John. Hey, you know, there was a point in this game where LSU had 17 fouls, Louisiana Tech had zero. So I would say it's probably about as bad a half as they played all year. Probably that was their worst half of basketball and it's still single digits. First four minutes is going to be really important for LSU. They have to win the first four minutes, get back in this game as well as the swing momentum. Underway here in the second, Louisiana Tech looking for its first win over a ranked team since 1991. Twisting shot, Efton Reed, who spent much of the first half on the bench in foul trouble. I love that out of a halftime call play, get your big guy a touch, and he is old school. We saw him with the right hook in the first half and then the left hook to start the second half. He went to the pine with just under eight remaining in the first, did not return. Kobe Williams loses handle. LSU ball. Here's what I loved about Reed. Watch the patience. With some freshmen, they got like hot potato. He did a good job of getting to his spot, getting to his move. And Kenneth Loftich knows something about a left-handed jump hook. That's his go-to. Pause for poise is the turn of phrase that Will Wade says he uses with his bigs. And that Efton Reed is embodied from the day he set foot on campus. What a feed. Backdoor Wilkinson. And just like that, it's a four. Seven unanswered for LSU. Walked it off the overplay. Three ball, Willis. Basket here, you might see timeout, Louisiana Tech. Wide open. Murray misses, and a foul looking for the loose ball. And this guy is a seven foot freshman. I repeat, a freshman. He sort of lefty jump off, and then. Excellent recognition by Reed, kind of fueling that defense. Here comes the help. He knows where his teammate's going to be. Able to finish. 
But he picks up his third foul. Now he's going to go to Bass John. And Will Wade gave him a fist bump as he subbed out. Let's see how that changes things. Easton, LSU's leading scorer on the year, is in. Took them a lot longer to get him into the first. We didn't have a dead ball for the first eight minutes or so. Lofton gets fed way away from the cup. Snaps it off to Christensen and one. Xavier Christian with a chance in a three point play. Yeah, I was waiting for someone to cut. And as he gave it to Lofton, I felt like everybody just stood around and watched him. There was the cut. Lofton's a really good decision maker because you can see in so many double teams, he normally makes the right play. He's going to catch a little bit of a blow here before the 16 minute timeout. I'd be surprised if we see him again. But that was a huge basket to stop the bleeding for Louisiana Tech. And one free throw is good. Eric Conkle challenged up this year. Played Alabama out of the gates. Got blown out. Played NC State. Played him close. It's a game that saw. Lofton go nuts. Pinson. Opposite Wilkinson who can shoot. Days River. Ram it in. There. I think this becomes Kobe Williams 24 is going to be really aggressive Archibald Eason's got it Three ball Big bucket Brandon Murray Todd up over a week sprung to life in the second they looked a little listless for stretches directionless in the first half late stage first half start of the second they look like they have far more purpose well they were still with it were within single digits even though that first half was their worst half of the year they've come out and play with a purpose here to start the second half now if you're Louisiana Tech they gotta go down low to loft I don't know why they keep getting away from that even if you get him a touch, he's such a good passer as well. Walton shapes up, flashing in the lane, guarded by Eason. Six to shoot, Archibald slashing in line, in and out. He thought he was fouled. Pinson, no look alley up at Williams. This rocks takes it away from a much bigger Eason. Sprinting down the floor, right at Wilkinson, whose length alters the shot. Feathery touch to Eason, right at Lofton. He has no fear against the Bulldog big man. Oh, back and forth we go. Kobe Williams is a bit out of control. Lofton's got to do a better job. You see he was kind of in between there. He was between, like, uh, taking a charge and blocking the shot. You know, as a defender, you got to make up your mind. I think if he would have taken the charge there and fell down. Might have got that call. If he would have went straight up, he might have got that call. Instead, Easton gets the free throw line. And converts on the first. Well, Easton transferred in from Cincinnati. And his gains joins the floor in favor of Murray. There's the first lead of the game for LSU. Offensive foul. Yeah, Pinson right when he felt some contact there. It's Kobe Williams saying I didn't extend his arm referee thought so and now LSU looking to build on their first lead of the game Hand checking using an arm bar One of the points of emphasis that was brought up in the officiating video this week Eason smooth 
Uh, Will Wade got Easton on the court a lot earlier here in the second half than he did in the first half. He's been a difference maker for the Tigers. They have their largest lead up three. A 14 to three run. It feels like the defense is suffocating now. Archibald kicks corner. Willis wide open. Oh, they needed that bucket. High game. Willis wants it opposite, wide open down the floor. Lofton buried in the corner and double teamed and a travel. The battle of Louisiana. LSU is down eight and a half. They Benning is 13. LSU did not know a lead until minutes before our last break, but LSU was on the second half. Eric Conkle was working referee Doug Sermon some while we were away feeling that Kenneth Lofton Jr. was hit and did not turn over on a travel. That was called. Efton Reed double. Passes out of it to Fudge. And an offensive foul. Willis took the charge and did he catch a sneaker to the base afterward? <laughs> Inadvertent, but he came up clutching at his face. Continues to wipe just below his nose. And I think the last thing he thought was, was going to happen today was the sneaker to the face. Hopefully he's okay. The 6'3 sophomore from Texas. But smart play there. You see that shoulder dip as a defender. You know he's at your mercy then. Stewart wanted it. On high, Christian. Eric Conkle is asking the Bulldog fans to get up. Reed gets double. And Christian's got it. Lofton. And one. He's big, he's burly, but he's got soft hands and great body control there by Kenneth Lofton, not barreling over the defender. Great catch, gets through his strong hand. And then some cheerleader love as well. <laughs> That's awesome. He took gold with the U-19 Team USA squad over the summer, playing for Jamie Dixon. He did not technically win the MVP, yet most of the numbers and his performances in the biggest games, including the gold medal game, he was probably the best player representing the U.S. And there's a look at him against France, and he came to play in a big way, able to lift that gold. He was teammates with Chet Holmgren, the number one recruit in the country, now with Gonzaga. It was Holmgren who was named MVP, but he took to Instagram afterward and said the real MVP was Lofton. And just hanging out with him a few minutes before the game is you know, Eric Conkle's trying to get him a rest here because you got a TV timeout coming at the under 12 minute mark. He's just got such a fantastic demeanor about him. And you may see the tight jersey and the shirt underneath. Eric Conkle's been so impressed. He's dropped 25 pounds since he came to school. He's down 10% of his body fat. You know, earlier in his career, he couldn't possibly play 30 minutes. Now he's consistently playing 30 minutes. And you think that he's only a freshman. And a technical foul was just given. Another flop here. 
Darius Days. Longtime staple of this LSU team. This is called a flop. Archibald shoots the technical free throws. I love the flopping call. Need to clean up the game because it's hard enough to referee, but then you got kind of wink wink plays where you know, everyone's trying to kind of Bogart, Humphrey Bogart, that is, the referees and act. Did you ever flop in your day? Yes, every chance I could get. But I'm <laughs> saying it's, uh, it's not good for the game. But it's on a level now that it's like, you know, you could get away with a little bit of something, but now if someone gets hit, it's like they've been in a car accident. It's like, dude, the guy just hit you in the shoulder. Reed back in, Lofton on the bench. Each is three fouls. Willis, three ball off, gains the hopping rebound. If you're a Conkle, you gotta like that shot, though. Dribble penetration led to an open three. LSU, they've had too many breakdowns defensively. Days. Willis, nice feed to Archibald, right down the lane. Denied. And a step out of bounds by Fudd. I love the aggressing, aggressive attacking nature, but you gotta make that. I mean, there's no other way to say it. You go into your right hand, you're an experienced player, you're fifth year, second on the team in scoring, like nobody fouled, you gotta make that shot. Bradford and Williams back. Christian subs away. Stewart dribbled into trouble. Hunter smooth. LSU hasn't hit a field goal in over three minutes. And a foul. Afton Reed's got four with 12 minutes to go. I thought this was an easy call. See him move out there, and especially Kobe Williams sold it. That's a really easy call. Freshman moment there. As Reed, when he's been on the floor, he's been effective, but now with his fourth foul, LSU is going to be forced to go smaller, playing Easton along with Days. They had a lot of success with that. No Kenneth Lofton. We're going to see him at the under 12 minute mark for Louisiana Tech. Willis doubled, coughs it up to a teammate. Williams slicing down the lane, feeds corner. Stewart for three. Weak side days. Pinson is back on for the Tigers. His unblemished record, six in peril. They have trailed most of the game. Murray hanging. Missing. Bradford left the dribble prone. Numbers for LSU. Eason. Days puts it home. Eason slow to get up. And a noticeable look for Eason as he trails up the floor. A smart play there by Pinson to take the foul. Although that's team foul number six. LSU is trying to claw back into this game. LSU, 1988 in overtime by a deuce. Each of those teams made the NCAA tournament that year. From a ranking standpoint, where would you put this up there as far as program win for Eric Conkle? For Eric Conkle? I would think there's a strong chance you can make this number one. And he has won a lot of games, 137 in seven years. He's won 20 or more five times in his first six. Got a contract extension this summer through the 25-26 campaign, but to beat an unbeaten third in the net, top 20 in the country in the AP LSU team. That's tough to top. 
four to shoot. Williams up fake, got days in the air. And it falls short, caught by LSU before the shot clock violation. Gaines feeds quarter, extra pass, hits it, wing three, smooth. Benson cracked a 1,000 points as a collegiate earlier in the week, including his time at Mizzou. So it was all set up by Gaines, though. He's been a difference maker. Ugly turnover. Days try to chin and spin. A jump ball comes. The LSU ball. And this is one of the better possessions LSU had all game. Gaines has been awesome off the bench. Defensively with steals on that time. Dribble penetration. The ball finds Pinson. He makes a big shot. We're not it up. Pinson, by the way, plans to be a radio or TV announcer. Don't do it. You, you, don't do it. Here's why I don't want you to do it. He'll, he'll take my job. I, Pinson, I got bills to pay, buddy. Well, he's I from, got two kids. He's from away. Chicago. He went to Simeon Academy. You've been a Chicago resident since your collegiate days at Northwestern. What a great high school home of Derrick Rose, Jabari Parker, made famous by Benji, Ben Wilson. He's been outstanding here. Just that leadership for Will Wade's group. I asked Will Wade, are you surprised? What's the one word that could describe a 10 of those start a ranking of 19? He just said satisfied. I was hoping actually for a little bit more. Were you okay with that? I like it. That shows swagger to me. Satisfied. That's like bare minimum. That's how much he thinks there could still be to come as the players are acting as the floor crew here toweling up the wet spots now they have a gauntlet to begin SEC play the league is tough as it is and they are taking on their, their top in league competition right out of the gate Auburn gets it ignited and the schedule is not very forgiving for the first three weeks there are some colorful I repeat colorful sneakers out there some orange some blues the fluorescent blues, I love it. Pink. Williams with two on the timer, rattles away, lofted. it. He's like a big amoeba down there. He just like dwarfs into people and falls over and just has the ball and lays it in. Well, you would ask Eric Conkle, did you look to any unique sources for the unique talent that he has? And he talked about a talent he had already had experience with. Pinson right at Lofton, whistle and foul. That'll be four. And that was Jai Lewis, who was the big man, very similar to Lofton, but led George Mason to the Final Four in 2006. Yeah, I mean, just look, look how he worked there and just kind of adjusted his body. But this is a big, pivotal moment here. His fourth foul, you know, he's pleading. I thought it was a good call. He has to do a better job defensively of committing to going with his hands up and down, north and south. You know, he's turned his body once, he came down on someone. That just makes it an easy call for the official, especially on a big guy. And, you know, this is something to mark down here. 50 now to 49, him going to the bench with his fourth foul. So obviously, score dictates a lot. How long do you plan on him sitting on the bench? I'd bring him back at the six minute mark. So that's my goal, but you know, you, if this thing starts to spiral out of control, maybe it's under the eight timeout. I, I would not set it too long. Pinson converts, ties it up. Four fouls for Lofton. Now it becomes, you know, the Archibald show. In Louisiana Tech, they've had great success. Getting into the lane and finding shooters. Archibald turns it over. Gave it away to Fudge and then the foul. That'll be Archibald second. Nice play here by Fudge. Anticipation. You know, when your star player gets their fourth foul, it takes a little mojo away from your squad. In the first possession, they turn it over to Louisiana Tech. And correction, make that his first foul. He's 
Jackson finds Wilkinson. Murray. Off the up take. Baseline drive. Murray came out in warm-ups with a Nirvana shirt on. That so caught your eye. I, well, I had to say something to him. I said, what's up with the shirt? He goes, I like the drip. I'm going to tell him right now, with that drive, I like the drip. But he was not well versed in any Kurt Cobain songs. Jumper off for Bradford. Pinched into the table. Gaines opposite, flips it to his bench. All right, when Murray here smells like, well, LSU spirit as he drives in, and I would consider that a dunk. That's called the Chris Mullen dunk, when you kind of lay it over the rim and just grab the rim. It's hey, really a dunk, but it's close. Dunk, not dunk, come as you are. There we go. There we go. Archibald, by the way, had eight points in the first eight minutes. He has not scored since. He's bringing it up here. Defended by Pinson, who was stuffed back in. You gotta keep playing if you're Louisiana Tech. This possession took forever to get into. Hunter wants it on the block. Willis slips in. Another layup miss, and Days has it for LSU. Wilkinson. Pinson off. Friendly fire, won by Willis. You can see Louisiana Tech right now, they're looking a bit gassed. So you got an under eight timeout coming here. I would want Kobe Williams trying to attack the basket. 24 in white. Archibald picks it up, needs some help, 10 to shoot. Christian. Hunter wants it again. Four to shoot. Archibald. A whistle. Archibald Reed is back out there with four fouls. Archibald at the line. Looking for his first point since the first eight minutes of the game. On the radio broadcast for LSU, head coach John Brady, who the last time LSU began 11-0, he was the steward in 99-2000. They went to the Sweet 16 that year, lost to Wisconsin. He later led LSU to the Final Four in 2006. And I ran into him at halftime as we headed to a break, and I basically stole his analysis. I said, what did you think of the first half, coach? And then whatever he said, I just regurgitated out. So that's all I do, John. I just go out there and plagiarize everybody. Two hours later, I collect the paycheck. Northwestern, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Archibald for the third free throw. He hits them all. And Louisiana Tech takes the lead back. The Bulldogs hadn't scored in nearly three minutes. They get three points at the line. Well, if I'm LSU, I I'm going to Days. He's been a difference maker four in purple. Efton Reed is back with four fouls. Lofton remains on the Bulldogs bench with four. Reed sweeping past Hunter, but misses. And a foul in pursuit of a loose ball. It is bonus. Wilkinson's got his second. And a Louisiana Tech team that had missed five of its first 12 at the line will have another chance here for one and one. Now you got to be smarter there if you're Wilkinson. I, I thought Reed got away with a walk. Wasn't called. And now Eric Conkle's team, and we talked about their star player, Kenneth Lofton Jr., is on the bench. Now you're able to delay that even more. But got to make free throws if you're going to pull off an upset. Now Archibald is standing at the line. But LSU doesn't believe that Archibald should be shooting. Doug Sermon says, yes, he is. Archibald just can three.
He was an All-State quarterback in his high school days. And he converts. And I found it interesting. You asked Eric Conkel, do you address the idea of winning this game? What that looks like, what that means. And he said he, they do that all the time. You got to see it to believe it. I mean, I love the confidence here. No Louisiana Tech players at the free throw line. And is that part of it? Envisioning victory by having everyone sitting back. It works. No look to the corner. It's heel days. The weak side board drops step short. Loose ball off Reed's hands out of bounds. Days has just been, his motor's been out of this world. That's 14 rebounds for Darius Days. Just not able to convert. See him coming flying in here. Maybe he, he could have taken an extra dribble, got better position, but then off Reed's head slash shoulder. They're going to send Reed to the bench with four fouls. And this is an enormous possession for Louisiana Tech. Why? Gives you a two possession lead as well as you're able to keep Lofton on the bench with those four fouls. You see Darius Days, another double double. Him and Easton have really been a difference maker. The bench for LSU outscoring Louisiana Tech 19 to 4. Offense has been slight of late. Bulldogs haven't hit a field goal in three and a half minutes. LSU is over its last four and hasn't scored a point in two and a half minutes. But LSU does incredibly well. They strip the basketball. Tips, steals, they turn you over. Right down the lane, offensive foul. A great job getting outside the lane there. That Gaines, well, he's just been everywhere. He's got three steals. Excellent job stepping in. As you can see, Archibald, he was determined to get to the rim. Easton screams, Pinson denies, floats it up, drains it with a kiss. One point kick. There is Gain smothering Colby Williams. He leads this LSU team in deflections. He is an excellent on ball defender. Right, look at his arms. Amazing length, and he has used it in this game. Here he has three steals. Jump pass up the floor. Christian can't handle. Out of bounds. LSU is one of seven Division I squads in the country undefeated. Baylor, Arizona, USC, San Francisco, Colorado State, Iowa State. Among them, Iowa State plays tomorrow. Colorado State had its game canceled today. All others in action today. Easton Euro down the lane. Foul. Tough move. Yeah, he knew he had a freshman on him. He did a great job of basically changing speed as well as direction to get a chance to get to the free throw line because I, I even thought he was going to drive right there. And then he was able to kind of Euro step and get himself to the free throw line. You had said you thought Lofton maybe around six minutes. Haven't seen him yet. Still a super tight game. Do you wait to the under four if it's within a possession? I think he's waving, put me in, put me in. Here's the deal. If I'm a head coach, which I'm not, I'm just a bad broadcaster. If I'm a head coach, I'm rolling my best player out of the court. Like, I'm pulling the trigger. That was where my mind was at. I get him back out there. I don't love the possessions Louisiana Tech has had. But LSU keeps bailing them out, fouling them, and sending them to the free throw line. Six ties, four lead changes. Bulldogs led it by as many as 13. LSU did not know a lead in the entire first half. There's not much going on here for Louisiana Tech offensively. That's why I would have put Lofton out there. Archibald. A prayer. Off heel. Rebound. Hunter airballs it.
LSU 10-0, winning by an average of 26 points per. Getting its biggest test of the season. Days. Rainbow in and out. And the Tigers have now missed on eight of their last nine. Both teams look tired and rudderless. And just a, a lot of standing around for Louisiana Tech. Check, check their offense right now. Nobody's moving. Stewart ready to sub in. Willis cuts cup. Murray funnels to Pinson. Dangerous pass finds Eason. Oh, what a cut! Yeah, Eric Conkle's going to wait to this under four timeout, but they just have nothing going on offensively. I think he waited a little too long with Lofton on the bench. You can see Lofton there standing just behind the bench next to the scorer's table. Williams hesitates. A contested two off. And because now a basket here, you're down two possessions, maybe even five points. I got it. It's a hard thing to do. It's easy for me to say, sitting over here, but he's waiting for the under four timeout, and here it is right here. LSU calls timeout. Louisiana Tech hasn't scored in over three minutes. You gotta think Lofton will be back on the floor. In the game. Kenneth Lofton Jr. back out there now. For those of you tuning in for 13th ranked Auburn at St. Louis, you will find it online, cbssports.com slash cbssn as soon as it tips off. And, of course, we'll get you out there immediately after the conclusion of this game. LSU has only led for a little less than three and a half minutes. Can the Tigers tie or take the lead? Gaines feeds quarter. Murray wide open. Air ball. Out of bounds, Louisiana Tech ball. That's a great look. Get triple penetration. It gains once again. Got in the lane. Well, Wade's got to be thrilled with that. You know, Murray just missed the shot. If you're going to win conference games with six teams ranked in your conference, you're going to have to make that shot. Here comes Archibald. Lofton playing with four fouls. Hard screen on Murray. Well, this is easy. Get two and white the ball. Christian finds Lofton, up fake, and Eason not baffled, denies him at the doorstep. And one more dribble, Lofton could have relocated and got the shot he wanted. Great defense there by Eason. Days, rainbow miss. Archibald jogs up the floor, Christian took a tumble off ball, he's slow up the floor. Lofton slithers in line, reverse, right to the window. The footwork for the big man is sensational. Eason. What a roll! This matches LSU's largest lead on a day dominated by the Bulldogs. Stewart, Lofton just standing off that left block. Now comes to the ball. Archibald behind the screen. Four to shoot. Bad pass. Williams somehow saved it. Three ball. In and out. And a rebound days behind Lofton. They still got to keep playing if you're LSU. But this is where when you milk the clock like this, everyone gets out of rhythm from an offensive standpoint. Eason. And one! And Will Wade spotted the matchup he wanted. Kenneth Lofton Jr. with four fouls. He gave it to his leading scorer and said, feed the horse. He's into the line. Day's career-high 17th rebound was the trigger on that possession. 
rims away. LSU has its largest lead. What are you looking for? Not aggressive early. Louisiana Tech standing around a lot. Half court on offense. Gotta go make something happen. Lofton wants it. Wilkinson fronts hard. Williams to Lofton gets triple team. Day strips it away. And a travel. Now a foul was being called on the baseline that would have fouled Lofton off. But on the near sideline, lead official Doug Sermons overruled and said travel. Great job. I absolutely love it. But like the first in anything, going to be some adjustments with due time. Williams calls the break. Christian up the wing, Willis. Oh, they're moving with a purpose here, Louisiana Tech. That's what they need to do. Each team two timeouts. We approach one minute. Christian telegraph pass stolen away. There's that man again, Eric Gaines. Oh, just been a massive X factor all over the floor with those 46 slash 47 sleeves. Now Gaines with the ball. Clock on the Tiger side. Eason. Oh! Point from Tari Eason. Yeah, great job pushing through and then using that rim for the monster finish. He's made every big play. Bounced in a three, three-point play. And then massive hammer time. Time Wilton. Willis three ball. Weak side gains. Foul 25.7. And Tim, we're on our way. Barring a bit of a miracle. So a final score that will not be indicative of what most of today has been. You know, it was a 50 to 48 lead for Louisiana Tech when that man... Kenneth Lofton Jr. picked up his fourth foul. From that point on, Louisiana Tech could only muster seven points over the last ten minutes of this game. Can't really say he deserved to win. So they just struggled to score. I don't know if they made three field goals over the ten minutes. I know they went to the free throw line a bunch, but they really went into struggling in a half-court offense without their star big end. This guy's been fantastic. 6'2 sophomore from Georgia. And he changed the game as LSU's bench. How great have they been, John? Excellent. And it's it's a, a little misleading. Eason is their leading scorer. He plays starter minutes. He comes off the bench. And he's had a big day. But yes, their depth is certainly on display. Williams. And there's another rebound for Darius Days. This is not anything new for Will Wade's Tigers. Their defense allows them to gnaw into deficits. And you wonder where they would be if they had Adam Miller, who transferred in from Illinois, an outstanding outside shooter. That's one of their weaknesses that could be exposed in league play or in the NCAA tournament. But defense travels everywhere, and they have it not only through their five, but through a good portion of their bench. Be interesting to see if Louisiana Tech fouls if they miss. The Tigers are 11 and 0. For Tim Doyle and our entire crew, I'm John.